to speak. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm on my iPhone, not on my computer, so I have to keep going back and forth from one screen to another. You're all set, Eileen, but you're muted. Okay, you thank you for coming, everyone. Um, I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order. Uh, Susan, can you um, take attendance, please? Yes, uh, Robert Blank. Kathleen Clark. She's here. Everybody's yeah. muted. Yeah. They have to unmute. Could you just look at the list of participants and know who's here? No, I need to take attendance. All right. Who are we having a problem with? Just yeah, taking attendance. Melody's pamphlet. She was here. Yep, I'm here. Go Jubin. Here. Diane Durant. Here. Michael Fox. Here. Eileen Francolino. Here. Anna Kubish. I thought I saw her, but maybe not. Kathy Mickey Piambo. Um, I'm not sure if she's officially resigned, but she's gonna resign. Okay, Gerilyn Nagel. She's listed as here. Um, she appears on the screen, but I don't know. Allison Smith. Here. Nancy Mankey. Kathleen Sullivan. Tom Tallard. Max Turgeon. Here. Walter Bordeaux. Laura. Oh, Kathy, you're on mute. Carolyn is here. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. Okay. You all set? I'm all set. Okay. Um, I'm not sure we have any minutes from the last meeting that I'm aware of. Is that correct? That's correct. I, had not, I have not received any. Yeah, I, I okay. will get for our next meeting. Okay. And we don't have any public participation. Um, so we don't have any remarks from the Committee on Public Participation. So, moving right along, we're gonna have a nice fast meeting tonight for a change. Um, and who wants to speak for the calendar committee? I, can I just interrupt for a second, Eileen? Uh, my sure, name yeah. wasn't called, it's Gail uh -oh. Kelly. Okay. Oh. Okay. We got that, Susan? Got it. Okay. And, and, and I, don't, I don't know if I'm on it or not, Eileen, but whatever. Oh, you're, you're right. Um, Bill DeMayo as well, Susan. Okay. Sorry and about Anna that. Anna just connected. Oh, okay. Who just connected? Anna just came on. She's just connecting oh. now. Thank you. Okie dokie. Geraldine, you're on here twice. Um, okay. Uh, so is there some, one of you who would choose to speak for the calendar committee, please? Diane, do you want or you want me to? Sure. I can okay. and Kathy and, and others add in. So this is Diane Durant. We met about the calendar because we hadn't met for quite a while. So we met yesterday and we made a couple of decisions about how we're going to move forward. So we're going to do a 12 month calendar for 2021. Um, we plan on getting a price for 200 as was recommended. Uh, Sue has reached out to the printer and has not heard back. She followed up with them and still trying to get a response on costs to print 200. And if we wanted to reprint how much that would be and so forth. So we're waiting to hear on that. Um, the calendar previously was gonna have events included on the calendar, but because of what's going on, we're not gonna be able to proceed with the calendar and have events. So we're not gonna include those. Um, we're still using the submitted entries that we had because we had people in the community send in the photos for the calendar. So we're going to proceed with those and select those as part of our committee and print those in the 12 month calendar. And we'll make plans about how we're gonna notify them and so forth. And um, there were a couple things we wanted to ask the steering committee for. Um, so again. Uh, you're fine. Okay. Um, I thought you were telling me to stop that. It was like, yeah, it's <laughs> all done. <laughs> um, so anyway, we have a couple of things we want to ask of the steering committee. 
first is funding the cost of the calendars. So we haven't been able to fundraise. And so we're obviously going to have to pay for our first run of the calendars. And so we're hoping that we have the money in the budget to fund the cost of those calendars. Um, the second thing we want the steering committee to help with, and maybe Melanie or someone can help us, is we want to set up online ordering so that we can have that as an option. And those of us on the committee, we aren't technically um, skilled enough to do that. So we're willing to help out, but we're looking for some guidance there or someone who can lead us in that effort. And then the third thing we wanted to ask the committee about is when we distribute the daffodils, if there is an option for us to be able to provide a flyer for the calendar if they're not ready or, or whatnot so that we can distribute out information of how they can purchase the calendar and give information at that time. Perfect. Okay. And I'll stop there, Kathy or Anna or Sue, did I miss anything? No, but I have some information since because I've talked to two people on NCTV, including okay. Gerilyn. Um, and that was talking about how to advertise the calendar since it's not just going to be sitting there for someone to look at. And obviously we have our Facebook page, uh, but I've been back and forth with Patty Foley on, um, at NCTV and they're enthusiastic about advertising uh, the calendar. So that's Good. one. The other thing is I wondered about um, presenting, again, the flyer to various town meetings, especially since they're all Zoom meetings, coming up as a public participant for multiple meetings and speaking about the calendar to all and sundry meetings. Good. Sounds good. Um, okay, so let's take it with step one. Um, can somebody make a motion about funding the calendar, please? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor that we cover the cost of printing the first run of the calendar? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. We're good. Great. Thank Second you. thing was, what was your point too, Diane? I forget. Yeah. Um, we need help with online ordering. Okay. Mel, that's on you. Are you good with that? I can work on that. Um, okay. The two sites that I looked at um, will take credit cards, but they will charge the 2.7% credit card fee. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the third thing was... Oh, was flyer. the flyers at the DAP yeah. to Daffodil Pickup. Bill, are you there? Yeah. Mayo? Yep. Is that something that we could do? It, it certainly is. I'm With okay. the COVID-19 thing, the, I'm not sure that you want to hand paper to other people. Um, we could definitely have a sign and we could also mm -hmm. do an email blast to all those that are picking them up. Yep. We're at a, we have a hundred, the last I checked was uh, this morning and I think we're up to about 125 oh. families oh, reserved. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reserved them. Perfect. Okay. So if we get something to you, we could email blast it out to them. Okay, yep. sounds good. That's yeah. reasonable. Yep. Yeah. That's the other reasonable. thing is, Eileen, uh, Madam Chair, wouldn't it make sense for the committee for the for the calendar to do a news release, a newspaper release, so that we get it out to everybody? I mean, that's the way you're going to get the thing out, and then you get it to the social media people, and yeah. um, you know, you'll they'll blast it out to fourteen, fifteen thousand people, and you'll be in great shape. I think social media is the way to go. I'm really not sure that the um, town crier is even doing an online um, anything anymore. This past week they had six articles. It was kind of crazy and a big waste of paper. Um, I don't know what their what their plan is, but I did. Right um, I did speak to Erica with um, the town crier. She yeah, was I trying to get as too. much information um, about the calendar as yeah. possible. And unfortunately she was under a deadline for the first article, but right. she did say when we had all of our um, information together on the calendar, she'd make sure she put in a central piece for just the calendar itself and its release. And if we could give, you know, somewhat of like a, an image of it, or maybe the three of you, the three calendar girls with the calendar or a picture or something, she would make sure that it got online. Unfortunately, right now they're not doing anything um, paper-wise. Everything's digital, but it would still get out there. 
Yeah. Okay. It's better than nothing, that's for sure. But yeah, we did plan on doing very, very news. Little. Yeah, we mm -hmm. planned on doing news things as, and so forth, but since the daffodil thing's coming up quicker than, yep. than things, we wanted to bring that up tonight. What? Go ahead. What, Eileen, what about uh, using the rare reminder? Because they now have been having quite a few news articles about Newington in it. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a safer bet. Maybe the Herald might do something, you never know. But um, the town crier is... I don't know. Well, yeah. er Erica is the is the Herald. She, yeah. she's, bo she's both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So hopefully the Herald would come through. But also, let's say we already we did get an article already. You and right. I, Eileen. So, so right. we're, but we didn't have any news at the time because it was right. really right when COVID was hitting. But um, a, a Newington Life, pro we had an article that did include some mention of the calendar, and because people entered it, they're anxious to get the winners, but I also wanted to say when we when we met, we were also talking about, we don't want to release too much in the way of photographs that are really going to be on there until it's ready to go. You could have a, I hate to call it a dummy, a photograph that was like what, was, what came in to just show that there is a calendar. But I think because there's a contest until we're really ready to announce that it's all done and here's all the people who won, I don't really want to put any pages up because I think it will trigger a host of social media questions and why is that there? Why is that there? Yeah. So that's my biggest concern. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just one thing, guys. Um, can we, before you speak, can you state your name, please? So Bill knows oh, yes. who's talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. The other question that I had for you ladies was, um, is every entry going to be used? <laughs> no. Oh. No, not this. Yeah, this is Diane Durant. Not every entry will be used, and the com and the calendar committee is making the selections, but we'll notify all entrants mm -hmm. of the results. So, the reason I, this is Kathy. Susan. Can I just say something? The reason why that we're not using all of them is because mm -hmm. it was intended to be a sixteen-month calendar. Right. Um, I just didn't know if you'd sneak an extra one on the back or in the inside of no, the back. We, we always take and put a collage on the back with all of yeah. the end, which yeah, I think we're planning on anyways. Yeah. So I, don't, I think that can be something that can be done. That'd be nice. It's like a consolation prize or something. Go right. ahead, Kathy. Kathy. Yeah, Kathy Clark here. And that's, I'm working with um, uh, Sue Patton, who is our IT person, who's not officially on the committee, but she's done a lot of work and she's, when I say willing to go forward, she's not, we have to say we know what we've got, but now we have funding and we have to, whatever the last iteration that Sue and I put together was the 16 months. So she and I now have to go back to it and tweak it. But we were planning our last version of it. We were planning to try to get almost everything that was entered on um, in a collage, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Also, there were a few that did not fit the rules such as they had a person in them. So there's some that aren't being used because they didn't qualify. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Moving on. Um, the next item on our agenda was a website to sell our goods. Um, do we want to do that? Do we want to save them for the extravaganza next year? Um, I don't know. Mel, where'd you go? Oh, over there. I see you. <laughs> Is that something you think we should do, or do you want to wait till um, the extravaganza and sell them? I sent out a list of what we have left, and there's still quite a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm open to you, whatever you guys feel most comfortable with. I think um, if we do the house tour thing that that Geraldine was talking about, maybe we could give away some of the bags as as a prize for, you know finding 20 houses or 30 houses or whatever they want to do you know we could set some rules up for that that might be a fun little thing but um i think the bags we could sell we don't have a good size run of the t-shirts i i don't know oh, we have plenty of those paintings plenty 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 um and i i don't see an expiration date on the um the avery soda but I, i'm sure there must be one don't you think i don't i don't know anybody know about that I don't know. I mean, I've popped a couple that I had in my basement from the um, 100th, and yeah. they they were all still good. Nothing settling to the bottom or anything. I think as long as it stays out of a normal temperature. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, I, I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to be in the public and, and get them out there if we need to sell anything or yeah. if we have any events and we want to set up a tent, I have no problem putting myself out there and uh, yeah. being able to do it. We just don't have any events. That's the problem. You know what I mean? There's nothing, nothing coming up. Um, I know that, um, you know, our goal is maybe to piggyback onto some other um, events in town, but as far as I know, there aren't any events in town happening. Um, aren't there still like concert series going on? Yes, uh, it goes yeah. through the uh, 11th and 12th this weekend or next weekend coming up. But that's, that's in the um, parking lot, right, Bill? Yes. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're getting about two or 300 people, 400 people, depending on who the band is. Yeah. I haven't, they, I, I asked once if people wanted to do that, everybody said no. So I didn't ask again. I figured everybody didn't, was not up for that. So I don't know what to think. Eileen. Yes. Hi, Kathy Clark here again. And this is something we discussed at the a calendar meeting, but it, it speaks to having stuff to dispense. And um, they said that you guys had had an idea earlier. I think it was bill about having a pick your calendar up day um, say at the firehouse and if yeah. we did that and we did feel I personally was not willing to sit but other people might be and um, I wonder if if we could make it an event like that where you have to pick your calendar up I think mailing it's just going to add this additional level of cost and mm -hmm. and Take complications time. but anyway so an event like that that's just pick up your calendar but you can have your other stuff and you could buy a t-shirt or a soda. They, um, I talked with Charles Brown about that, who is the health director. Um, his opinion was that it, if we had it outside, it would be okay. Um, he didn't want the merchandise to be touched um, so that people should not be looking at a calendar or trying up a shirt or mm -hmm. checking out the bags or touching the soda or anything like that. Um, it would have to just be you're large, here you go, put it in the bag and go. And he said that um, his suggestion was not to use gloves, that use hand sanitizer and sanitize, sanitize between every single person. Wear a mask and sanitize and maintain social distance. I, I think to have all our merchandise there would create a problem because people would be hanging around in the six foot thing, just probably wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? If we wanted to go and sell like pick one item, sell our bags or sell our prints or something that t-shirts are hard because people want to touch them. Um, that would be difficult. The other thing we talked about, I don't think you were at the meeting was um, taking a calendar and making a display board of it so people wouldn't want to touch it. So we eat the cost of one and put the pictures up so people would know what they were buying. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, once you get your calendar together and if there's people who want to do that, we could do that. I know who was who at the last meeting that said they were? I'm happy that? to help with that. Yeah. Okay. I am as well. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, you know, once you get your stuff together and you get your calendar printed, probably won't be till the next meeting, I would imagine. Um, we can we can set up a, a group of people to, to do that. Okay. Great. Um, maybe, Mel, you, when they, somebody could call you and you could book a time at the firehouse. That yeah, works. I mean, we're doing something, we're doing outdoor mostly as well in the firehouse. Yeah, we would need a date that we could stand out in front and do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. yeah, there'd be no problem. Okay, sounds good. All right, um, what's next? Oh, the 50 for 150, there was a little change in plans for that. Did you guys get that letter Bill sent out? Mm, yeah about the mayor's ball. So that 50 from 150 is gonna be a little bit changed. Um, we can talk about that when we get to the events part. And was there anybody interested in chairing a holiday ornament committee? Okay, that's a big fat no. All right, moving on. Um, the events that we were looking at were the random acts of kindness, the blood drive and the cemetery tour for the fall, the mayor's ball, restock the shelves, maybe a dinner in the park and the historical society uh, house tour. So to, to chair the random acts of kindness, what we're doing is looking for someone who would just reach out to the um, 
PTA, PTO presidents and tell them what we want to do and they would take the ball and run. Um, so it's, it's not anything that's a whole lot of work. We just need somebody who would like to do that. Is there anybody that would be interested in doing that? Okay. How about, well, the blood drive, the blood drive would be a one day thing. Um, I'm not sure if we can use the gym, but um, it would, you know, it would be a big blood drive. You just have to call the Red Cross and set it up. It's not really, I think you have to get some things to eat and that's about it. Um, anybody up for that? Yikes. Okay, the cemetery tour. There Eileen, we go. I mean, I can help with the blood drive if you want. Okay, thank this you. This is Diane Durant. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Kathleen, the cemetery tour, you're going to take care of that? Yep, since we're just, we're not having one this fall, obviously, but um, right. we can easily put one together for the second fall. I've been in touch with Beverly Lucas, who is, um, who runs the cemetery tour in, um, uh, what, and yeah, Cedar Hill Cemetery. And she's willing to help as far as even finding costumes and, um, uh, really just be very, very helpful. In fact, Cedar Hill is doing their cemetery tour as a video this year. So oh. heaven forbid we're still in the same boat uh, next year. It is actually something we could do uh, virtually. So, cool. uh, but hopefully that's not gonna happen. And I just sort of wanna get the calendar out of the way first and then hit the ground running as far as the cemetery tour. Sounds good, okay. The mayor's ball. Everybody should have received some notification from Bill, uh, a letter that's going to go out sooner or later. Um, May is just a, um, uh, a hopeful day. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, maybe Bill could speak a little bit about that now, please. Yeah, I, I think what I did was to get us off dead center, put together a news release in a flyer that's totally open. It's just a draft, totally open to your recommendations and your review. However, the May 1st, you know, first we wanted to do it in January, then we wanted to do it in April. And then now with the COVID thing, I moved it to May 1st, but certainly it, it could be, it could move on farther than that because we just don't know how it's going to go. But basically all the details are there. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. It'll be entertaining. We're thinking of magicians doing card tricks, walking table to table. We have, you know, DJ ideas and we have some, um, uh, a little bit of comedy. We've got some tours of the community center plans um, and, you know, unbelievable food and unbelievable uh, dancing and entertainment. So I think all in all, it'll be a ton of fun. We've got, I don't know, 10, 12 former mayors that we'll invite and um, hopefully they'll get a table uh, already had a call from Stonehenge and they want to be a, a, their first sponsor. So we're, we're going to be in good shape. It's geared up for to break even or make a little bit of money. And that's kind of what I went on so that we didn't have to spend any money from the budget of the committee. And I think it'll be just a ton of fun. And I think in the past they did it at a couple restaurants because they weren't big enough. And I think with the new community center, um, we should be in, in pretty darn good shape and uh, we can pull this off and make it memorable for everybody. Sounds good. So the 151 for 150 is going to turn into something for the mayor's ball rather than what we had originally thought about, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what you originally thought of, um, but I was trying to make it up. We a talked about it, <laughs> me and you. Uh, what do you mean, help. a 50? No, 150 for 150 was going to be a donation plaque that was going to be set up in the, um, oh, you know, yeah. there's 150, 150 people, 150 oh. names for $150. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, okay. Yes. So yeah, it kind of, it changed a little bit where the fact that we would go to, I couldn't get a, I thought I had the Rotary Club, but I didn't get them. Uh, I was looking for a big sponsor, but we'll, we'll go with a, like a Mr. Trophy type plaque. And the first 150 people that sign up for $70 will get their name on it. They'll get two complimentary drinks. They'll get a reserved seat. And um, they'll, they'll be in, in, uh, put hung on the wall with their names for the 150 names. After the 150, then I think we went to $75. 
and just to fill out the place. I think, you know, I'd like to see 200 to 300 people there, maybe more if, you know, if we're optimistic, but I think we could easily get 150 people. I know all the people that I've talked to, everybody said, put me down for two tickets, put me down for four tickets. So I think it's going to be a very popular, popular event. We just yeah. got to get the, get rid of COVID-19 and, and have, have a little bit of fun with it. We'll probably use college kids from Parks and Recreation to help run it and administer it so that all the volunteers on this committee can enjoy their, their, their time in the evening and, and make, you know, make new friends and reacquaint with old ones. Um, I had a little chat with Michael's caterers today, but we can talk about that later. Um, he was very excited because he's from Newington and he wanted to cut us a deal and all this other kind of stuff. So whatever, I'll sit down and talk to him, see what he says. Might be expensive. I don't know, but he does bring linens and everything with him. So that's a, that's a big savings right there. We'll see. I can. I've got a, yeah. I've got him down to a, a pretty delect delectable um, buffet for my ADA um, state conference. Yeah. And I got, I got him from $39 down to 26 75. So ah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, he's a, he's very cooperative and he's a great guy. Yeah. And no so wonder when I told him who I was working with, he went, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking if, you know, for budget purposes, I was looking at $30 roughly for the dinner, $10 for the entertainment, $10 for the hors d'oeuvres. I also want to do if depending on sponsorships and what kind of deals we can cut with people, I'd like to do some type of um, uh, commemorable giveaway, like at a wedding, uh, yeah. kind of like a chocolate bar that says the 150th yeah. anniversary on it. So they go away with something. Also, sure. we also sure. talked about um, glasses, drink uh, printed drink glasses, tumblers that are fairly inexpensive. We just got a price of a dollar 75. So we, depending, everything would be dependent on if I get one sponsor, if I get 10 sponsors, right? So we have um, some money to play with too. So I'm not really all that concerned. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we could get some little, a glass and put the little m and yep. or, you know, let's say 150 on them or something funny in there. We'll, we'll figure something out. Right, okay. right. Yep. That's, yeah, that's it, it'll, be, it'll be a fun time. And I don't think anyone's going to want to miss out on this one because it'll yeah. be, it'll be typical fun, fun night. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so the 150 people to register, if we were to register and I were to get two tickets, what is that one plaque? Is that two plaques? Would I get to oh, no, 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 no. It's, if I could be more clear on this, it's going to be a, like a Mr. Trophy plaque that says 150 is celebration or whatever on the top. And then there'll be probably two or three rows of people's names in little like one inch by three inches type of thing, you know, so it'll be uh, hung on the wall in perpetuity at the, at the community center. So if I yeah. buy five tickets uh, and I want to put like, say I'm a family and I want to put like the Mankey family, is that, that's, that counts as five, but I put one name or I put all five of our names. That's not uh, my situation. I'm just curious. I uh, didn't give it that much thought, but I mean, the way we looked at it was, five names if, for the first 150 people that buy $70 mm -hmm. tickets get a chance to put their single name on a little inserted part of the plaque. Okay. So, you know, but if you wanted to put the Mankey family, that's fine too. I don't see any problem with that, but you could put uh, Mr. and Mrs. Blank, you know, and you could put, you know, uh, Joe and, and Sally. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't think that's, we're, we won't get bogged down too much on the details. I'll, I'll be able to, you'll have those little slots available and you can fill them out the way you want. Okay. I, I also had one other question. Um, Eileen, you said we have a lot of money to play around with. Um, are we still like, I guess in terms of events for the life of one, <coughs> is this, is this it? Are we still doing like a birthday party or any sort of event next year at all? We don't know. Because if we, I mean, I guess whether we have money to play with or not, I think depends on anything else that we're doing. I don't know that we have, you know what I mean? I just. Yeah, I think um, the concern is that we still have money sitting at the town hall. We haven't taken that money out. That's, just, oh, I haven't anyway. I don't think you have. We got money in this year's budgets that's sitting in um, 
still sitting in an account there and finance. we haven't taken yep. it and put, yeah we haven't yep. taken it out of finance to have yep. it so that's, 7, 500, right yeah so we have a little bit of money that we oh. can yeah, so we have, we have that plus the five that we have right now, but there's the calendars, there's the daffodils haven't come out yet. And then I just don't know how, you know, previously, I think we had talked about like a parade in this party in the park. I mean, stuff like that yes. costs, I mean, thousands of dollars. So we really okay. only have, you know, 13 to play with is what I'm saying. So yeah, I, I guess I forgot the parade. Yeah. I mean, I put a budget budget together. We really have 13 to 15 right now. And that's right. including if we sell all of the rest of our inventory. So I just, I didn't see like a spot in this agenda to talk about the budget. So I just wanted to, yeah. I, I did take a look at it. There's really 13 to 15 tops if we don't do any other fundraising. And I yeah. think the mayor's ball sounds like a, a great idea. I think we should put everything we can into it. I just want to make sure that we're planning ahead. And if we want to do something else, you know, I think we really need to start thinking about the, re the rest of the life of the life cycle of 150, really. And I don't know yeah. that we're really doing that right now. So I understand that it's up in the air what we want to do next year. But I think it matters when we do start planning the mayor's ball, because I think fundraising is like pretty much out. And I know, Bill, you said it depends on whether we get sponsors or not. So I, I know it's all up in the air. I just want everyone to be aware that it's really thirteen to $15,000, which seems like a lot. But if we want to plan a big party in the park, and a parade that's mm -hmm. also well, awesome. let me let me let me, uh, let me clarify maybe it was maybe that was too vague I, I will not put on an event that will lose money so i'm going to break even or make money i don't want to over promise but i i fully intend to give this committee a decent amount of money back from this maybe i'd like to think between 1500 and 5000 dollars as a as the net profit once it's all done for the for the mayor's ball I also spoke to, if I'm speaking out of turn, stop me, Eileen, but oh, I, also spoke, I also spoke with the National Guard guy, and I can't think of his name for the life of me. Um, he's totally on board. Fran Evon. What's that? That's Fran Evon. Fran, that's it. So I had lengthy conversations with Fran. He's totally on board with uh, cooperating with us. He's okay with um, co you know, calling it in cooperation with the 150th anniversary. And I told him that, you know, maybe this committee might donate a thousand dollars towards a band that he can't afford to make the parade even bigger and better. Um, and then we talked about ending the parade at Mill Pond Park and having either a DJ, music, pub music, a band playing patriotic music, maybe free ice cream for the first X amount of people and some entertainment that wouldn't cost too much money, but make it somewhat of a community celebration in the park after the parade that people participated in. So um, again, not too much cost involved, but big bang on your buck as far as people enjoying themselves and getting together and celebrating the 150th. Hi, Lane, Kathy. Yes. Hi, I'd also like to uh, point out that although the calendar is not um, primarily a fundraiser, we should come out ahead with the calendar. I'm just picking out some numbers out of the air, but, yeah. and I'm just estimating based on the previous estimate for the higher amount. Let's say we make 300 of them and that costs us $2,400. I'm just making it up. If we sell 300 calendars for $20 a piece, we make $6,000. So, right, right. so right. the calendar is definitely not gonna be a, I, I mean, maybe we'll, hopefully we'll estimate the right amount but the calendar is not going to end up costing. It should generate some income. Correct. That, uh, I, guess, I guess I think everyone maybe misunderstood. All I'm trying to say is, Eileen, you just said we have a lot of money to play around with. And I just, as an accountant over come. here, I'm yeah. having a hard time because everything's so up in the air. So I just yeah. want to let everyone know we haven't really planned what we want to do next year. We haven't said what we want to do. We haven't said how much money it's going to cost. So all I'm saying is from my perspective, I don't know that we have like tons of money to play around with. That's all I was saying. Right. I understand. Um, right now, in terms of planning anything other than what's on that list of events, I, I'm not really all that comfortable with planning th anything more than that because we just don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? We just have no idea. As far as after the parade, if the um, National Guard wants to bring their blow-up machine, you know, toys there that they have that they do for nothing, that'd be great. But I don't know with COVID if they can do that. You know what I mean? It's it's all right. It's too hard to tell right now. Um, that, was, that would fulfill, you know, any kind of little party in the park, have the little blow-up machines, have a little ice cream, have a little music. You know, it would be some yep. good way to end um, and celebrate the parade. Um, 
the only other things on here, the random acts of kindness shouldn't cost really anything. The blood drive is maybe going to cost a couple hundred bucks for food. Um, the cemetery tour. Well, I don't know. I don't have any idea about that, to be honest with you. If that's uh, You know, I have, a, I have a lot of experience with cemetery tours and yeah. they could be very, very costly. I, I can yeah. tell you my, my budget was $20,000 in New Britain. Yeah. So, um, you know, it costumes, lighting, microphones, you could do Bill, it small. You can do it small gonna scale. It's going to be in the day, daytime. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the daytime. And I've been a participant in the Cedar Hill. Yes, the lighting is expensive, um, but we don't use we don't use microphones and we all bring our own costumes. And most of the people that I'll be dealing with are uh, community theater actors who usually have a um, a bunch of costumes available. So the kind of cemetery tour, this was totally historic and should not be, I mean, I don't think it's going to be totally free, but I don't think it's going to cost very much either. Okay, perfect. So I guess, I guess then my question is just, I still think we need to start, I know it's all up in the air, but if we're all now saying, oh, this isn't going to cost anything, this isn't going to cost anything, what are we going to do with our $12,000 at the end? Of, like, are we going to have the party? Are we going to, you know what I mean? I think we just, I understand it's all up in the air. I just think we need to start thinking about it a little bit. I feel like we kind of have no plan right now. Right. I agree, but I think it's very difficult to plan because we just have no idea what I, life I, is going to I understand, but we're having a mayor's ball. I mean, that's a lot of people in one yeah. space, right? So I think if we are going forward with the mayor's ball, I think it does make sense to say, okay, what are we going to do after that to kind of celebrate the end of 150? And if I'm, right. no one else so, is on the same side as me, that's, that's totally fine. I just feel I like if we're going to go forward with the mayor's ball, maybe we need to think about what else we want to do so we can put together a budget and kind of see the whole thing through. Yeah. I think there were a couple other things that I neglected to put on the agenda. One was an open house at um, Indian Hill that Max was going to check into. And the other one was we were going to do something at the Night of Lights with an ice sculpture that said 150 kind of thing, like a send off kind of kind of thing. That's, I don't know, Bill. Yep. Yeah. That's about how, much is, how much is the ice for the um, end I of the year? For off, the, off the top of my head, I think it's four blocks of three of um, hundred pound blocks of ice. Yeah. For, I think it's six hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I could I could confirm that with the guy, but he's a professional uh, artist chef kind of guy. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, the tree went up, and the one hundred and fifty is probably going to have to go horizontally rather than vertically. So it may be a few more, maybe a few less. But yeah, I I, yeah. If it, it, budget if you, 600 to a thousand. Yeah, yeah, six hundred to a thousand. Yeah, eight hundred is the, is the yeah. middle. Yep, yep. That's good. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. And, and we don't even and we don't even know about that either. I mean, right. <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know, depending on COVID, we don't know if we're going to have these events. It, it all depends. I mean, right. Well, right. that would be next December, not this December, that we would want to do it. You know. Oh, okay, okay. As, as a closing activity rather than a open, we could do both, but I, I would think yep. as a closing activity, it would be kind of fun. Um, yeah. So that I think you could put in your budget for, I would say a thousand dollars. That makes sense. Yeah, whatever, whatever events we have too, the 150th committee can be part of in any way, shape or form, right? We can, right. somehow we can get you guys in visibility and that, right. you know, participate in somehow. Right, so, um, and the restock the shelves should not cost us anything, maybe a couple of flyers if we wanted to put the flyers out or something like that. Um, Dinner in the park was just a, a gathering of people at one of the concerts. So the music is already there. You bring your own dinner. If we wanted to sell beer, we could sell beer, maybe if that's okay with Bill. But that's that's not a not going to cost us anything. And the historical house tour is not going to cost us anything. So I think under new business we had the parade um, and the Indian Hill thing. But other than that, is there anything else I'm missing? Eileen? It's yes. A Hi, Susan. I'll chair the holiday ornament. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Go ahead, Geraldine. You're muted. Do we have a treasurer's report? Yes, I know. I forgot to put it in the... Um, in the agenda, but we can talk about that. That would be fine. And um, I have one more question. When yeah. you get to seven. Seven. Okay. 
Geraldine, I think you are logged in twice and that's why you're getting a big echo. Okay. Um, okay, so are we good with money? You think or no? Are you, is she? Is everybody on mute? I think so. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? There we go. I got you. Yeah. Okay. I have a question when. Okay, when, Joe, go I, ahead. Um, I, don't know, Joe I don't know if it's coming up later or it's just not here, but um, it seemed to me that the um, daffodil distribution needed at the end of the month needed people to help. Yep. Yep. I heard, I did not put that on there. Um, we'll put that under new business when we get there. That would be fine. Or we okay. could talk about that now. Um, daffodil distribution is the 30th, I think, of September. Wednesday uh, the 30th. Yep. Yeah. So Bill was looking to, for four people, four or five people to come and help out. Is there anybody that's interested? It would be uh, no touch. Just put them in the people's car. Um, no contact or anything. So it's, it's a safe thing. Um, I, I can help. This is Joe. Okay. That's great, Joe. Anybody else? I can help. This is Mel. What, okay. what time would that be, Bill? Uh, probably five. I think we're going to start at five. So maybe four o'clock, four to four to seven thirty, four to eight. Uh, okay. I can help. Okay. What's the date again? Wednesday, September 30th. Okay. At the okay. cemetery. It would be at the, um, if you meet at the chapel, that'd be great. Okay. So I have Joe, I have Mel, I have Mike. Who else was interested? This is Allison. I can help. Okay, Allison, beautiful. It's, okay. Could you um, email those to me? I'm up in New Hampshire right now. So if yep. you could uh, email me the, the people that want to be part of yep. it, uh, we'll I'll be in contact with them. Great, okay. thank you. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so Allison, are, are you, um, why don't we just stick in a treasurer's report right now? Cause I forgot. And you can um, talk a little bit about that. Um. I can say that we have $4,981.65. Okay, that's fine. In terms of budget, again, I'm, re I'm really struggling. I, I mean, you can add 7,500 to that. And I guess I kind of estimated our remaining inventory somewhere around $2,000, but I have no idea what everything really we're going to sell for. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of expenses, I just, I, you know, it sounds like everything's going to be close to nothing. Everything's going to be a couple thousand dollars. And maybe that leaves us like, I don't know, eight or 10 for some sort of a party if we do decide to have that next year. Mm -hmm. So we got our expenses covered. Um, and generally I think, you know, things will be a little more, a little less or whatever. And I think in the past when these committees have met, they have left some kind of <sighs> lasting legacy type thing to the town. There's a, there's a monument, like a, looks like a headstone somewhere in town that I've seen that was like for the hundredth or something, um, I don't know. There's things that people have left, like they've invested the, the proceeds into something else that would be something the town needed or some lasting kind of um, memento-y type thing. Um, but we can, we can do that if we have any money left and see what happens, you know? I guess uh, I, I also, I know this is small, but we had previously paid a deposit <laughs> for the, uh, yeah comedy night i think there was a hypnotist it wasn't a yeah. lot but it was like 50 dollars. i don't know i think kathy might have arranged that yes we want to get it back do we want to still use him for something can he be used for the mayor's ball i mean you mentioned something about a magician i don't know um she emailed me today um to say that we were going to push that off because we can't really meet inside it's just kind of a waste of money so um she was going to try to push that off to a later date. I didn't hear back from her. I don't know um, what happened or if she was able to reach the guy. Um, okay. Maybe, that's on, that's on, on hold. And that, again, would be something that would be a fun thing to do and would also oh, should be profitable. You know, we shouldn't, shouldn't cost us any money. Um, but we need to do it at a time when we can meet inside, and God knows when that's going to be. You know, we got to be able to have 100 people at least inside. So, um I don't know. It's so hard to plan. Um, 
So Eileen, are we no yes. longer, this is Anna Kubish, are we no Hi. longer doing the um, golf tournament? Um, no. Max decided it was too much and it was, we didn't have the help and it's, um, it's yeah. not so, happening. Um, yeah, so that was actually going to be, you know, when we, we, I talked to Wayne in Indian Hill, you know, back in late winter, early spring, it was, it would have been last week or two weeks ago. And um, just with uh, the height of COVID, it, it was pretty difficult um, to, to do any kind of fundraising because like, you know, I could have asked my dad for a donation. My dad was close. So, I mean, it just, it just, it wasn't going to happen. In fact, Indian Hills is having their first tournament, I think tomorrow. Um, so there's fine, you know, there's finally a, a, an outing or a fundraiser type thing. So I think um, what we can do is, is we can attempt to do that, you know, next, next spring or um, do something smaller, just do like an outing or a day where it's not really, um, it's not really a, a fundraiser, but um, something, you know, where we kind of want to try to break even on what we'd probably still need to do donations, you know, to, to cover golf or food or whatever. But, um, you know, I know the Rotary is doing their tournament in September at the end of September. So I, I would assume if we did want to do a big fundraiser, you know, we'd have to get cooking on it, you know, in the fall. But if we wanted to do that in the spring, hopefully that's something we'd be able to do. Um, again, it's just if, if businesses are doing okay, then I would feel a lot more comfortable getting T signs and hole in one sponsors and, and stuff like that, you know. Um, Max, would they be interested in like doing a, um, I don't know, a free day for Newington residents or something just so people could get up there and, and see what the course is like and maybe they'd have a chance to showcase their course and people would I don't have know. a chance to golf or... Um, yeah, I mean, they I, they have re the residents stay on Monday. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just where seniors play free. But um, yeah. that one might be tough, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, I didn't know if that was something they could do or if like... Um, you have a lot of people your age who are very good golfers and they could, you know, golf with a pro kind of thing like that or free lesson with a pro or, you know, something yeah. like that, that would um, not necessarily be a tournament, but it was, it would be a, an, an outing where people who maybe didn't normally golf could come and have a little time to learn or. Right. Or, if, or get, you know, kids involved, you know, that, that are, yeah. are interested at, at um, cause that's, I mean, that one of the problems with golf is the, you know, time and, money you know to access it so that might be kind of a nice thing yeah uh, and you know even if you did it for kids it would be kind of cool because um it's future members you know it's good for them it's good for us right. it's good for them if we wanted to do a kids outing or something um bill do you get many kids that sign up for golf lessons up there yeah we do we do it about three times uh three six week lessons mm -hmm. maybe 20 20 or 30 kids each time is it the same 20 or 30 kids or is it like no. six kids all together? No. Yeah, oh. it's new. It's different kids. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you could do something off their driving range. Maybe yeah. you pay the instructor, um, you know, 30 bucks an hour or something and you let 20 kids sign up mm -hmm. and they, they could do it. And maybe he would donate his time for this committee. That mm -hmm. would be kind of, kind of nice, but you got to remember that that's a private club over there. It's um, they do not, well, it's a it's a private club. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah it's um, it, I mean, for uh, it, it's one of the only golf courses I know with the the setup that it has. You know, being on on town land, but it's, it's a private club. It's a really unique setup. But I mean, maybe um, what, something we could do in. in what Bill said is with the driving range, you could do like a, um, some kind of, you could do a few th things you could do because Casami is in there now and they're doing a great job. Um, yeah. you could do like a cocktail and appetizers thing and, and Wayne can do, you know, some kind of presentation and we can have people hit, um, you know, it's just, it's just kind of getting them to, to, to go along with it. I, I do think they, they should want to be involved. I mean, I don't know if you guys have read the history of Indian Hill, but it's pretty incredible going back to 1899 um, in town. It's all online. It's, it's really interesting. But um, 
yeah, it, I mean, going forward, we just want to kind of decide if we want to do like a little event or we want to do a full blown tournament, you know, wh whatever the committee kind of wants to do, I can help facilitate, you know, I was looking forward to doing that in August, but it, we were, we were just not in a position to do it successfully. I agree. I think yeah. an event would be nice. I think a tournament is probably a big bite for all of us. You know what I mean? I, I think it's a whole lot of work that I don't it, want to. It is a lot of work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we just did some kind of event that was a little bit smaller, but still mm -hmm. um, opened up the club a little bit to the public and yeah. maybe, you know, could showcase Casamia, could showcase the, um, the Indian Hill and it could be fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see what you can find out and um, bring it back to us next month. Okay. Yep. I will. I'm going to be up there three days this weekend, big three day turn. So. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hit, hit them long and straight, Max. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> okay. So we're done with our events, our new business. We did that. Um, and we talked about the Memorial Day Parade. Um, and piggybacking with other groups in town, if there's some events that are happen to come about and they want to let us join in on them, that would be great if you know anybody that has something um, that's coming up. Um, Maybe, you know, give me a call, whatever we could, we could work with them and, and see if we could blend it into our town celebration. Um, we talked about Indian Hill. Oh, we, we missed the historical house tour. Darn. Um, so, Geraldine, I got your list. I think we're going to save that till the spring when we can um, do that when it's nice out, when the daffodils are up. That would be <coughs> good. Um, and we can do some kind of contest, um, you know, take a picture at, 20 houses you visited, bring it into Parks and Rec and show it to them and we'll give you a free tote bag or something like that. We can, we can come up with a, some kind of contest. Make now sense? is there, can you hear me? Cause I'm yeah. not, okay. Is there a uh, website yet? Or I know yes. there's a Facebook. What's the website? Cause I've been looking for that. So. Oh, What's boy. it called? <laughs> Ah, uh, I got to look it up on my phone. Newington 150 or 150 Newington. I, I don't know which way it went. Does somebody have access to a computer? Um, We're all on computers, right? I know, but I don't want to <laughs> change my page, you know. Um, hold on. Beautiful, actually. Yeah, it, it's um, Newington150.org. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. is the list of houses on there yet or not yet? No, I didn't put them on there yet. I thought it was premature because we're not going to be running a contest till the spring. Right? Okay. No okay. Worries. All right. Um, and, and I'm not going to do, I mean, I'm not going to do anything with the mayor's ball until we talked closer to maybe December, January, see how the COVID thing is going. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to bring up? Um, I know we, um, you and I talked about um, like the, the Glastonbury Lobster Fest. Yeah. Type thing. Um, so I reached out, we reached out to someone on the Glastonbury Rotary and it's a pretty big ordeal. So you know, to, to me, it sounded like, it, you know, it, it would be, they, they kind of have spent decades perfecting it and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be a lot of work. I think it's too much. Um, Geraldine, did you want to say something? Your hand is up. No, uh, no. Okay. Um, okay. And I don't think there's anything else. So those people who volunteer to um, work with the daffodils will send you a reminder um susan's going to work on the holiday ornament um i'm going to see if maybe robert will work on the um fill the pantry because he does a lot of work with them kathleen's going to work on the cemetery tour diane's going to do the blood drive so we made some progress and, um, and just so everyone knows the town uh, the parks and rec department bought 500 or a thousand daffodil bulbs and we'll be planting those at the firehouse, all the government buildings that we're responsible for. So the senior center, the library, town hall, firehouses. So that way it'll blend in with the houses that, that do it also. It's going to be beautiful. I, mm. I did buy some bulbs at um, Sam's Club. They were like 
I think I got 15 and they were maybe 50. I got 50 and they were like 15 or 16 bucks. I don't know if they're good bubbles or bad bubbles, but I thought it was. <laughs> they keep, I'll give it a try. See what happens, you know? That's right. Make yep. them look pretty. All right. We're good. Anybody else? Can somebody make a motion to adjourn? No move. Make a motion. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you in a month. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bill. Ah, big thank you. <laughs> Leave. There we go. Thank mm -hmm. you.